Now that I've introduced our program and discussed the criteria for weight loss surgery, as well as some of the benefits, I'd like to talk about the procedures themselves. There are many different procedures for surgical weight loss. I'm going to talk about the three most common procedures that are done. The gastric bypass, the vertical sleeve gastrectomy, and the lap bands. The first procedure I'd like to speak to you about is the gastric bypass. The gastric bypass has been around for quite some time. It is a procedure that many people are familiar with. It goes by many names, gastric bypass, Roux-en-Y, Roux-en-Y gastric bypass, and it's the original stomach stapling. What we do in the gastric bypass is we cut the top of the stomach and fashion it into a small pouch about the size of an egg or two eggs. We then reroute the intestine and sew the intestine up to this little pouch. Because we do this, the gastric bypass works in two different ways. One, it limits how much you can eat at any one meal. The other way it works is that since the food is not going through your entire intestine, you don't absorb all of the calories out of the food. You only absorb some of them. Because the gastric bypass works in these two ways, it works very well. If it was a perfect operation, it would be the only operation we do. But there are some issues that can occur with the gastric bypass. Wherever we cut the stomach or intestine, or sew it back together, if it doesn't heal properly, it's possible that it can leak. If the gastric bypass leaks, we're talking about leaking acid or intestinal contents into your belly. This can be a serious problem. This can be a life-threatening problem. Luckily, leaks are very uncommon, but they do occur, so we do tell you about them. Since with the gastric bypass, we reroute the intestines, another potential complication we see are nutritional deficiencies. It is possible after gastric bypass to be deficient in certain vitamins and minerals. We do test for these and provide supplementation where necessary. Not all patients get these deficiencies, but it is a possibility. Because the gastric bypass works in two different ways, patients who have a gastric bypass, on average, lose more weight than patients who have the other procedures that we're going to discuss. As you can see here, gastric bypass is very good at preventing, treating, and even curing weight-related medical problems. The next procedure I'd like to discuss is the vertical sleeve gastrectomy, more commonly known as the sleeve. What we do during the sleeve gastrectomy is take out approximately 80% of the stomach. The remaining stomach, we fashion into a long, thin tube, like the sleeve of a shirt. By reducing the size of the stomach, we are again reducing how much you can eat at any given meal. Reducing the size of the stomach allows you to get full off of a very small meal and stay full throughout the day, thus aiding in your weight loss. As we are cutting the stomach, there is still the possibility of a leak, although leaks are fairly rare. Do keep in mind, however, that since we're removing part of the stomach, the sleeve is not reversible. It can be converted to a gastric bypass if needed, but it cannot be reversed. As seen with the gastric bypass, the sleeve has a profound effect on the weight-related medical problems that we've been discussing. The third procedure I like to talk about is the adjustable gastric band, or lap band. The lap band is a medical device that we wrap around the top of the stomach, turning the top of the stomach into a small pouch. This model is a little bit small. On you, that pouch would be the size of an egg or two eggs. What this does is limit how much you could eat at any one meal. The lap band is attached to this port. This port sits underneath the skin of your belly. You can feel it, but you can't see it. We can make adjustments to your band using this port. What we do is put a needle into this port, and if we put fluid in, it tightens the band. If we take fluid out, it loosens the band. When the band is tighter, this little pouch stays full longer, and you feel full. You're not tempted to eat between meals. If we loosen the band, 
the pouch can empty sooner and you'll get hungry sooner after a meal. Our goal is to adjust the band to a point where you're eating a small amount and you're staying full all day. Since we're not cutting the stomach or the intestines or sewing things back together, the risk of a leak is very small with the band. The trade-off is, is that weight loss with the band is slower than with the other procedures. There are some complications that, that are specific to the band. It is possible for the band to slip out of place. This is unusual, but it can happen. If it were to happen, it does require procedure to reposition the band. It is also possible for the band to get infected. You're not born with this band in there, and so the risk of infection is a little greater, but again, is fairly rare. The biggest complication that we see from the band is something called an erosion. The way I describe an erosion is, if you took a rubber band and stretched it tight and wrapped it around your finger, after a while it would begin to cut into your skin. It is possible for the band to do that to the stomach. The band can slowly start cutting its way into the stomach. It typically doesn't make people sick, but what can end up happening with an erosion is that over time your stomach heals around the outside of the band and the band ends up inside the stomach instead of around it. The biggest problem with an erosion is that since the band is no longer around the outside of your stomach, keeping you from eating, people tend to gain weight. If an erosion occurs, the band does have to be removed, but again, erosions are very uncommon. As with the gastric bypass and the sleeve gastrectomy, the lap band is very good at resolving or significantly improving diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, and high cholesterol.